Attorney General, um, Mr. Eric Holder. Eric, I don't know if you remember, when you and I first met at the Super Bowl party, the Obama town, at the White House, and you were so laid back and cool. <laughs> Folks, AG, Eric Holder, the work he's doing for fair maps with all in. All on the line. It's all on the line. And this election will also be had it all on the line for our state Supreme Court race. Eric Holder. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Felicia. Um, and, you know, what Felicia said at the end is actually very true. It's all on the line. And I will disagree with what you, one thing you said. This is, you said, among the most important races, or this is a really important race. No, this is the most important race yes. in the country for 2023. Yeah. It's all on the line. You know, I, I see these signs. Defend mm -hmm. choice. Yes. That is on the line. Potential fair redistricting. That is on the line. Mm -hmm. Expanding Medicaid. That is on the line. There are a whole range of things that will be decided by who serves on this state's Supreme Court. And here's something else I can guarantee you. On Wednesday, the day after the election, April 5th, the pundits and people from the media will justifiably look at what happened in Wisconsin on April the 4th and see if there's a trend. We'll see who won, look at the demographics of who voted for who, and then figure out, well, what does this mean nationally? So look, no pressure. <laughs> no, no pressure on you all. No pressure. But what you do will help decide, you know, not only the fate of this state, but I think the direction of the nation as well. And the choices, you know, the choice here could not be more clear. We have a fair, impartial, competent um, judge, Janet Protasiewicz, who would make, I think, a superb Wisconsin Supreme Court state justice against a guy who is a, a MAGA extremist, who is an election denier, who was in part responsible for and defended the, the Scott Walker gerrymandering that you still have to deal with. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing that he's even the nominee. Um, but okay, Republicans decided that's, oh, that, that he finished second in, you know, in, in the voting, and so he's the person that she has to run against. But the choice, again, could not be more clear. It's competence and impartiality against extremism. And so the state's got to decide, you know, what it's going to do. And you're going to help the people of this state make that critical decision. Uh, now, you all say this is good weather, and I've, I've been told this is a Wisconsin spring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an East Coast guy, you know, born and raised in New York. I, I live in D.C. And I have a different version of a vision of what spring looks like. <laughs> but this is good. This is good. Um, but here's the deal. Whatever the weather, no matter how tired you are, no matter how weary your feet might feel, there are no excuses between now and April the 4th. We've got to do everything that we can to elect Janet Potasavis. Everything. We can't wake up on April the 5th and think, boy, if only I had, if we lose, if only I had, if only I had done this. No. We put it all on the line between now and April the 4th. You know, it's an interesting, too, interesting thing, too. You know, April the 4th is the 55th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King. Um, and so that is a day of loss. It's a day of remembrance. We could also make that a day of victory and a day of joy. Because that's what this is about. This is about trying to restore the notion that this great American experiment of ours works, that the people decide the direction of the nation, not the special interests, and that our, our democracy is somehow negatively impacted by these gerrymandered systems, these, this voter suppression. You know, the people of Wisconsin have the ability to say no. It, this is the state where progressivism was, was, was started. Yeah. You know, Robert La Follette, you know? This is where it all began. People around the country looked to Wisconsin for how democracy should be perfected. And now people are looking to Wisconsin yet again to see how democracy can be saved. Yeah. And so that is what is at stake. As I said, Dr. King's assassination, obviously a very sad day 55 years ago. He said, you know, that the arc of the moral universe is long, and it bends towards justice. But here's the deal. It doesn't bend on its own. 
-hmm. It only bends when people like you put your hands on that art and pull it mm -hmm. towards justice. And so what you're going to be doing in the canvassing that you do, the text that you send, the calls that you make, is pull that art towards justice. That is your task. This is about, obviously, a state Supreme Court race. It's about a great candidate, Janet Protasiewicz. But it's also about that art and pulling that art towards justice. You know, every generation of Americans is called upon to defend democracy. Every generation of Americans, from Gettysburg to the beaches at Normandy, from Selma to Montgomery, every generation of Americans is called upon to defend democracy, and this is our time. We cannot fail. We can't be the first generation of Americans that fails to defend democracy. And you're out there. You're doing the hard work. You know, I know this isn't easy. You know, I was kidding about it before. You know, the, the weather and, and you've got other things that you got to do. But you've made the determination that you're going to do what you can to defend our democracy so that this generation lives up to what past generations um, have done. I'm really confident that we're going to have a positive result here. <laughs> but I'm not overly confident, right. you know. Um, I've been in three Supreme Court races here in Wisconsin. And the one that we lost, I think we didn't keep our eye on the ball in that last week to the extent that we needed to. And so we can't repeat that mistake. <laughs> We've got to run through the tape. It's all on the line. Everything between now and April, I'll say April the 4th, no. Between now and April the 5th, let's give ourselves that extra day. You gotta do everything that you possibly can to get people out to vote, to make people understand who Judge Janet is, and to make them understand the nature of the difference between these, these two candidates. The choice could not be more stark. It could not be more stark. This is a vote for the people, or it's a vote for the special interests. It really comes down to that. This is a vote for progress, or it's a vote to take us back. This is a great nation. This is an exceptional nation. And Wisconsin has the opportunity to demonstrate to the nation and to the world that America is back. You know, that we are ready to take charge again of the direction of this country by electing Janet Protasiewicz. So look, again, everything that you can do is appreciated. And more than anything, I wanna just say thank you to all of you for you know, devoting the time, giving of your effort to, to make this election a successful one. At the end of the day, the people of Wisconsin will thank you all for making her a successful candidate, because there's a whole range of issues that the state Supreme Court is gonna have to rule on. Um, I'm gonna get off of one, you know, one thing, you know, you think about this, you know, stark differences. <laughs> After that abomination of a decision that overturned Roe versus Wade by the Ooh. federal Supreme Court, an 1849 statute now governs reproductive rights here in Wisconsin. Now you think back, 1849, women couldn't vote. That's right. People like me couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. And yet, Ann Kelly is a person who supports that 1849 law, you know? Or supports, you know, that is indicated in some form or fashion that that's something he probably is okay with. Now, you think about that. An 1849 law, women couldn't vote, African American people of color couldn't vote. We're gonna go back to, to that to decide reproductive rights in the 21st century. Again, that's a stark, stark choice. Talk about gerrymandering. You know, you know, I don't I can't predict exactly how you know Judge Protasewicz is, is gonna vote, but I know she's gonna be fair, I know she's gonna be impartial. I can tell you how Dan Kelly's gonna vote. He's a guy who actually defended the, the gerrymanders that Scott Walker put in place. So you know where he's going with this. So, you know, choice, reproductive rights, fair elections, anti-gerrymandering. This is probably the most gerrymandered state in the country right now. Democrats get about, no, it's a 50-50 state. You know, Tony Evers won, I guess, 51% of the vote. Mandela Barnes got 49% of the vote. You know, Democrats have about 35% of the state legislature. And that's not a function of anything other than the way in which the lines were drawn in 2011. It's, it's a contest between you, and I hate to tell you this, it's a contest between you and, and Texas as to what is, what is the most gerrymandered state wow. in the country. And when you get compared to Texas when it comes to electoral <laughs> things, that's not a good thing. Texas is the hardest state, hard, hardest state in, the, in the country in which to vote. So you don't want to be there. I mean, let, let's go back to the old 
the old Wisconsin, you know, the pre Scott Walker Wisconsin, where people actually had an opportunity to decide who was going to represent them. Because in these gerrymandered, this gerrymandered state, you have these folks who are supporting the special interests against the desires of the people, and they suffer no electoral consequence yeah. mm -hmm. because of the gerrymandering. So let, we can put, you know, we can hopefully her election will do something about that in addition to the question of choice. But again, thank you all for what it is that you're doing. Uh, I'm confident that through your work we can win this election. And at the end of the day, you, as I said, will put your hands on the dart and Wisconsin will be a little closer to justice. Thank you all so much.